two part video I guess one will be uh, one part will be the radios and equipment that I use for amateur radio and uh, running our Skywarn nets as well as kind of the backup power that we use or I use here um, it's kind of thought about or put together by watching a lot of Kevin uh, OBX Soul Wind o OBX SOL WIND uh, he's got a lot of videos on his YouTube site about uh, backup power and how he's uh, kind of prepped for emergency situations so it kind of fits in for what I do as being the uh, uh, Skywarn coordinator here for Muskegon County so what I'll do is show you first is my radios um, and uh, I'm going to clip this monitor off real quick because it's interacting with the camera but uh, this is my HF radio right here and this is the ICOM 725 uh, and uh, it's the antenna tuner here that goes with that and this is radio is used um, for HF communications um, and that's for long distance I've made contacts with that radio from uh, you know states here uh, to um, Ireland, Estonia, England, all over the world so and you can hear there's You hear some guys talking. One station's coming in well, and one station's not coming in too well. But uh, uh, I've got a G5 RV antenna in the backyard, and uh, it's about about 200 feet long, strung up in some trees, and works real well with me. So I use this radio here in the antenna tuner for doing any long distance communications. Uh, a lot of you guys have seen my other video and my go kit. And this is kind of where I have my go kit set at down here and that's for two meters and uh, that's all the local communications that I can do on the repeaters around our area here so I use that radio and power supply yeah, I'm plugged into the wall right now but it's also got a, a self-contained battery in it so if we lose power I can also communicate uh, using that um, with just uh, just normal 12 volt power so and that uh, runs out to antenna on the roof so I use that for all my local communications here and usually we do our Skywarn nets on uh, that frequency also, uh, 2 meters. So uh, This radio right here is a packet station. This is a radio and a TNC terminal node controller. The way I like to think of that is kind of the internet without the internet. Um, if I turn on the computer here, and I know this is going to flash quite a bit so I'll just make this kind of quick. Um, you can see right now I picked up the station for our emergency operations center. So by making a couple keystrokes down here and hitting send, it actually goes from the computer into the TNC, which changes it to a digital signal, goes out the radio, and goes to, uh, let's say, another radio. So it gets received in somebody else's radio, gets demodulated here into a computer signal, and then back down into their computer. So uh, both of our hospitals here in Muskegon County, as well as our emergency operations center, have packet stations. And so we use this to communicate um, back and forth. Uh, it's nice because it's not voice transmissions, it's digital. So if there's any sensitive information that needs to go back and forth, as far as maybe patients or some you know, damage reports. Uh, it's a it's a secure way to send um, traffic uh, over the air without to really being able to be intercepted, as far as you know, general public listening to it. So, we use that quite a bit. Um, actually, we don't use it quite a bit. We're we're starting to test it out a little more often, and uh, and we're looking at running some tests on the 16th of October um, for this. So you've seen the HF radio. You've seen the um, my go kit that uh, got featured in another video and then the packet station here I do have a base station CB which doesn't even have an antenna hooked up to it right now but uh, wouldn't mind playing around with that and just to have another form of commu commu yeah, I'm sorry, communication if need be so the nice thing about all these is all the radios here can be run off 12 volts so if we lose power um, I can run all my radio equipment off 12 volt power out in my garage, uh, coming in, in through these wires here, I have six six volt batteries out there. They're hooked in um, series, or hooked in series, and then all parallel together. So I've got a lot of amp hours of battery I, power I can put down into here, and then run radios and such. Um, 
up here I do have uh, a battery up here that has uh, got lighting this is an old landscaping lighting that I got in clearance at a store and uh, if you turn off all the lights down here this works it lights up the whole desk area things pretty well down in this area so if we do lose power um, I can run my radios and have light down here which is uh, important for me nine times out of ten if we lose power we have storms and if the storms are big enough usually I have sky warm spotters out there in the field and it's important for me to be able to carry on a net and uh, keep everybody else out there safe uh, at the same time so that goes into a little bit of battery backup and what I've done to prepare as far as keeping things rolling. Um, I want to take a few minutes and talk a little bit about the software. Uh, the software right here, you see this is called web chat. And what that is, is that's our National Weather Service web chat. And you'll find most of our meteorologists um, at the National Weather Service are in that chat room as well as a lot of the meteorologists uh, from the TV stations and most of the Skywarn people, one from each county, uh, are on there. And that's a way that I can take any traffic that's passed to me and be able to communicate it to them as soon as possible. Sometimes they'll have amateur radio guys right at the National Weather Service, but if it's something that is kind of hitting pretty quick, they may not be able to get uh, any amateur radio folks to, to get to the National Weather Service in a timely manner so that's an easy way for me to um, report anything back to them of emergency nature and they can keep us informed with whether they think they're gonna you know issue a warning or um, you know issue a watch or clear us out of a watch or so on and so forth so that's very handy and uh, we use that pretty much anytime there's a weather situation happening next software I've got kinda condensed down to partial of a screen is my inner warm software I'm sorry, my StormLab software, and that's a radi uh, radar suite of programs now. And there's so much information on this one screen. Any watches, any warnings pop up. You got local conditions. You have storm reports that pop up. Right now, we're in a pretty benign weather situation, so obviously there's not a whole lot of uh, information on the screen right now. But it's a great software product for the fact that anything I need is usually can be found on that one screen and it just saves from f clicking back and forth to a hundred different pages and screens and updates and so on and so forth so very useful piece of equipment um, or software next one that I use over here is it's actually um, it's a logging software so you can put your spotters in there um, you can activate them you can give them assignments you can dispatch them check them in uh, when they arrive and so on and so forth. And I'm just just experimenting with this. I've only had it for a couple days now. Matter of fact, I haven't purchased it yet. I'm just kind of uh, in the trial basis of it. But anything I can simp any way I can simplify things, uh, I, I certainly try to do that. And so um, I, I'm really hoping this will keep everything condensed. You can print off records when you're done. You can print off the t total time the Skywarn that was where people were at, what time they made reports, and uh, that would be very informative um, if we had to go back and look at an event and maybe the National Weather Service was looking at uh, when something is reported and trying to match it up on the radar data, uh, that, that could be uh, coming very handy. So, um, The nice thing about all the software, the logging software, the radar software, and the um, web chat I have on my laptop so if something were to happen and we lost power um, I can bring my laptop very quickly down here turn it on and have all the information um, my cable modem which is down there um, that has battery backup in it but I also have that hooked down to um, that UPS down there and my router for wireless internet is hooked to that battery backup and each one of those battery backups has two of these gel cell batteries connected to them in a series so they're both I think 12 or 8 amp hours so you get 16 amp hours of battery power for each backup so my laptop is run off 12 volts the cable modem and the router are both on backup power I have backup lighting 
my radios can all run off 12 volts so if something were to happen we lost power I can still continue to carry on a net uh, as if nothing happened and that's very important when you uh, when you have spotters out there in, in severe weather you know you want to make sure you can carry things out as well as possible um, without really missing a beat and I feel like uh, we've done that here and like again I want to say thanks to Kevin OBX Soul Wind because I've taken a lot of things that he's done at his place and have kind of put them into use here and these are all small things that I've done at a time you know adding things here and there um, we've been able to put together a pretty good system here so I guess if there's any comments or any questions uh, I welcome you to pass them to me and let me know and I'd be sure more than happy to maybe make another video or uh, or just kind of get back with typing on there I'm kinda of like Kevin I, I don't really type real well and I just as soon make a video and hopefully try to explain it that way and uh, maybe make more sense out of it than anything so hey guys I appreciate it uh, and uh, like I said any questions let me know thanks